Chapter 30, Air Brake Foundation Systems and Air Brake Circuits. Day 3, Video 1, Service Brake Chamber. Okay, so where the work gets done on the air brake system is out here in the service brake chamber, the air brake chamber. That 5 or 10 pounds of pressure that we uh, made the brake application is passing through the valves, through the lines, and out here to the brake chamber. Alright, so that 5 or 10 pounds of air pressure flows into this brake chamber. And one of the ways that we are able to magnify that effort is through simple pneumatics or hydraulics. Pressure working against an area equals a force, right? So that 10 pounds acting on a 30 square inch surface, right, multiplies that effort, increases up to 300 pounds, right? In the example we've got up here, if I'm making a full brake application, 100 psi, 100 psi coming through here into the chamber, the only thing that can move in here is the piston, right? And it's at 30 square inches of surface area. So that 100 PSI working against that 30 square inches of surface area gives me 3,000 pounds of force. This piston's hooked up to a rod up here to our slack adjuster, giving me a 3,000 pounds of force applying the brakes, right? So I can easily, with my foot, open up the brake valve for a 10 pound brake application or even a 100 pound brake application, right? We've now magnified that effort by using pneumatics over that surface area. The pressure over the surface area increases that force, right? So I cannot easily create 3,000 pounds of force, but I can open up a brake valve and allow that pressure to flow through to give me an effective 3,000 pounds of braking action. <coughs> So here is a cutaway of the, uh, the brake chamber itself. The air pressure coming into the brake chamber comes in here. And now I've got a rubber diaphragm coming across here that traps that air coming in between the uh, pressure plate here of the um, brake chamber and then the di rubber diaphragm coming across. The air pressure is trapped in there. And here's that piston, all right? with a rod attached to it coming through to the clevis that hooks up to the slack adjuster. So that five or 10 or 100 pounds of force comes through, acts on the surface on the, as it gets trapped in here in the diaphragm, acts on the surface of the piston, again, increases that force up to 3000 PSI, forcing that rod out and applying the brakes. Um, we've got a, a fairly small return spring here, so when I release the brakes, this air pressure goes away, and this return spring helps to push the piston back, uh, so it uh, releases the brakes out there at the, uh, uh, the service brake wheel end. The amount of surface area uh, dictates how much force that we've got out there in the brake chambers. So typically, very typical size is a 30 square inch brake chamber. We call that a series 30. Uh, we can have um, 24 series, 18 series. So again, that's telling us what the size of that piston is that uh, that air pressure is working against. Uh, the brake chamber stroke, distance between the pressure plate and the non-pressure plate side here. So the amount of stroke that we would have with this available movement we've got of this piston is from our pressure plate side here to the uh, inner side here of the uh, brake chamber. So we would have two inches of stroke, two and a half, or up to three inches of stroke for a long stroke brake chamber is how much movement we can get out of this uh, brake chamber to actuate the brakes. <clears throat> 